Popping today's news, quick action by police as a suspect is arrested in Wednesday's Parkgate and Village Road shootings. The suspect who stabbed a 13-year-old boy that refused to join a gang he faced the judge today on Grand Bahama. The latest on canceled Bahamas air flights to the Family Islands and the government reverses course on increases on boat license fees. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jorino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. It is a pleasure to have you join us. Shortly before 2 p.m. today, police press liaison officer Chief Superintendent Kristen Skippings informing the media of a police-involved shooting where the suspect involved was taken to hospital. Police say additional information will be forthcoming related to this matter. Police also informing the media that they have arrested a man in connection with one of the two murders that occurred around the same time on Wednesday. The man in custody is being held for the fatal shooting at Parkgate and Village Roads. That incident happened shortly before 12 noon and resulted in the death of a male victim believed to be from the Camp Road community. Police say the victim was out on bail for murder with his case expected to begin next week. The victim is believed to be a relative of one of the murder victims in the 2021 Jerome Avenue mass shooting. Meanwhile, police are still on the hunt for the suspects responsible for the second fatal shooting on Wednesday, which took place on Pine Yard Road off Fox Hill Road South and left another young male deceased. The two homicides on Wednesday, they are the 13th and 14th for the year. At the office of the Prime Minister's weekly press briefing today, Minister of National Security Wayne Monroe went into further detail with regards to the five-pillar crime plan unveiled earlier in the week by Prime Minister Philip Davis. He began by clarifying that the government's plan is not a knee-jerk reaction, but has always been the crime policy of the Davis administration. And so from inception, the Davis administration has proceeded on this five-pillar plan with ministries executing their parts of it. Um, you would have heard of a task force. I will explain how that is a slight difference. Uh, but to be very clear, the approach has always been the five pillar approach of prevention, policing, prosecution, punishment, and rehabilitation. Um, that can be observed in my address to the UB Public Policy Institute in March of 2023 and in many pronouncements. So the Bahamian public can be assured that this is not a knee-jerk reaction to any particular event. Minister Monroe goes into further detail with regards to the Crime Task Force, which he described as a multi-ministry effort. As the Prime Minister indicated, I co-chair that task force with the Minister of Education. And that is because we understand that a big part of our problem relates to how our young people are socialized what their educational experience is. And so the Minister of Education is the co-chair of the crime task force. Other ministers that serve on the task force are the Minister of Social Services. The importance of that is that ministry is responsible for guidance counselors, for counselors, for welfare officers who engage with the public who engage with young people who may be at risk. He then talks about resources provided to the Royal Bahamas Police Force. We have sought to equip the police since coming to office with greater manpower. We've recruited more police officers in 20 months than our predecessors did in four and a half years because we understand the need for manpower. The Ministry of Finance and the Prime Minister acquiesce to the provision of equipment to the police, namely 100 patrol trucks all at once, because it was necessary to permit 
the operations that they need to carry out. We've continued to upgrade their technology and the Prime Minister gave a teaser of increased CCTV footage with enhanced technology. According to the Minister of National Security, the Davis administration has contributed more resources for police in 20 months than the previous administration in four years. Meanwhile, the official opposition has been critical of the government's crime plan, describing it as a public relations speech. Bahamas Air recently canceled multiple flights into Abaco, Eleuthera, and Exuma due to issues with runway lights, causing airplanes to be unable to land in the evening or nighttime hours. Before entering Parliament on Wednesday, Minister Responsible for Aviation Chester Cooper updated concerned travelers and Family Island residents, as well as airport personnel, on the current state of those airports, noting that the issues have in part been addressed. Are the issues in Exuma and Abaco have already been resolved. Uh, Rock Sound, we're nearing completion of the amendments or the adjustments, fixes that's needed there. Uh, but there is a work in progress. The Deputy Prime Minister defended Bahamas Air's decision to cancel flights amid the resource issue, stating that the airline and the government is focused on maintaining public safety. We continue to monitor the condition of airports across the country. Uh, putting public safety first. So in scenarios where Bahamas Air would have canceled flights, it would have been the interest of public safety, uh, and therefore we will continue to monitor service to the public, uh, but putting safety to the public uh, as our number one objective. The Davis administration planned to carry out extensive repairs and redevelopments for Family Island airports using public-private partnerships. Minister Cooper said the infrastructural work required for the airports is in the tens of millions of dollars. While on the subject of travel, with the murder count already at 14 for the year, many Bahamians are concerned for their safety as well as how the high level of violent crimes could affect the country's tourism product. On Wednesday, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper, the Minister of Tourism, attempted to ease those concerns about the country's number one industry, suggesting that the crime challenges should not affect the safety of visitors. I think if you uh, really look at the incidences of crime closely uh, and you consider the policing plan of the government as laid out uh, by our Prime Minister and the great work that's already being done by the police in terms of detection uh, and arrest, uh, I believe uh, that will bring fairly significant comfort to anyone traveling to the Bahamas uh, that it's still a relatively uh, peaceful and safe place to travel. When asked if he believes the U.S. and Canada would issue another travel advisory that could potentially decrease the number of visitors, Mr. Cooper said he does not foreshadow this circumstance. And finally in this segment, on Wednesday, boat owner Terry Delancey shared a video message while at the Bahamas Port Department on East Bay Street where he complained bitterly about the new licensing fees for boats that saw his annual fee increase exorbitantly. Adamant to the, or amendments rather, to the Boat Registration Act last year saw boat licensing fees for smaller vessels increase, including a $200 fee for boats under 19 feet, $700 for boats between 20 and 39 feet, $1,650 for boats from 40 to 49 feet in length, which is about as big as most Bahamian fishing boats get. Additionally, there is a $75 inspection fee for boat owners. Mr. Delancey explains his frustration with these new fees. I have a 21-foot old well craft. I used to pay $20 a year. They're telling me now I have to pay $700 a year. I just finished paying. See the receipt, Jeff? See the date on the receipt? $700 I have to pay a year for a 21-footer. This isn't right. Simon Wilson. Minister Joe Bet Colby, Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis, y'all need, need to fix this man. There's no way in God's earth that I should be paying $700 a year to license a 21 footer and I used to pay $20 a year. Come on, man, this isn't right, this isn't fair. So y'all have a lot of people now not licensing their boats. From $20, $20, $20, if it's $40, then that's 100%. 
margin seven hundred dollars. This is wrong, and I ask the government to please revise these charges. Well, on Thursday, in an interview with Zedness, Acting Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Investments and Aviation, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper admitted that the implementation of the new fees they have caused much concern, particularly among small boat owners. He said the government has listened to the people and the cabinet has determined to suspend the new fees that will be taken back to parliament for revision. In response, Mr. Delancey welcomed the announcement. I want to say thanks to the Prime Minister, Philip Ray Davis, Minister Joe Bacobi Davis, and Mr. Samuel Wilson for the quick response. I just want to say I received a call and I was assured that I will be reimbursed and all those charges will be reversed. So everybody out there, keep your receipts and listen out for your call. There will be a public announcement that the fees will be reversed on those, on, on our boats. So to God be the glory. Thanks very much to the Karen PLP government. In the meantime, the government has established a maritime revenue task force to enhance revenue collection from the marine sector. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.